I want to replace that because I already have some HTML over there. So if you have like a P in there and the HTML is going to continue to be Also in case you, uh, if you, uh, your string comes from uh, user input, you don't want them to be able to stick in like a redirect to their website or something. Exactly. If there's some, they could, this is another, they could, they could do that with like, include some script. Uh, and if you evaluate that with inner.html, uh, inner HTML, it's going to execute the script. And if you just put uh, text content, it's going to render script like this string. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to execute this, this script. this case this is what happened this is the the perfect equivalent for for this one what if I want to change the attribute like what if I want to get the attribute value that's how you do it with jQuery so I have this element over here it has with if and I want to get this value that's how you do it with jQuery any idea how can I do that with JavaScript uh, this one I, I just want to get. So, box dot get attribute. So you can see that plain JavaScript is more verbose than jQuery, um, and that's how the language was designed. Um, jQuery is nice because they have all those shortcuts. And What, what if you want to set, you already said how it is, pretty much the same thing, set attribute, and I have two parameters here, I can just put 300 over there, that's all. What if I want to remove an attribute? Yeah. You don't have to specify pixel, the percent, or... Room. In this case, uh, I don't need it because I'm setting on the tag. So, if it was like... This is thing for like similar to like a video tag or something where it's always as many pixels as opposed to CSS mm -hmm. where it's got a whole bunch of units. Mm -hmm. If you did the same thing with CSS, you would have to uh, put like dot style dot with if equals 300 pixels. So remove attribute, pretty much the same, remove attribute, and then I just like with if, and then you can check if this is working or not. So we have the attribute declaration here, let's see if it removes or not. So I'm going here, it's not here anymore. Am I going too fast? No. no? Sure. Now I'll push all this up so if anybody needs to grab it. Cool. Uh, what about adding classes? Super useful. Oh. Hey, uh, I don't know if you heard that, Zeno. Say it again, Zeno. said so this is very useful. Yeah, it's good. You know, he also said, I need to give this guy money. I need to pay him money to save me more time. He didn't add that in, but I'll just let you know he goes for that. So how can we add classes? If you do more, you can do class name. There's going to be a list. You can do class list. If it's just, just one, I can do like this, right? A, B, C. So let's check if this is going to work. Class A, B, C. Uh, but like the the modern way of doing that, I think it's add class or yeah, no, no add. Uh, add class is jQuery. Uh, for plain JavaScript is 
So there's a new object called class list. And then from there you can just use this add function and add something. So this is multiple versus one, right? Uh, yeah, you can say that. And we can see that in practice. You know, I have this box class which was overwritten here, mm -hmm. and now I'm just adding x, y, z. So it's adding to that. So, gotcha. so instead of like this API is so much better because you don't need to like keep working with strings and appending strings or doing whatever. You know. So it just treated as objects, so it's much easier. What about removing classes? Uh, dot class list. Dot remove. Then we can remove box. I'd see if it worked. If not, I remove box here. What about toggle toggle class? What is the use case for toggle class? Making something visible or not? So imagine you have this hidden class that uh, the CSS class named hidden that would just change the display to none. And on click, you want to hide hide that on or like a tooltip, when you put your mouse over, you want to put that class, you know, you take it off, you want to remove that class. So instead of like doing this if statement, if something else, that you can just toggle class. So that's much easier. Uh, so we can just use that same class list object dot toggle. And if you want to see that in practice, like right now we have the box tag, so the desired behavior. Oops. The desired behavior is removing that. Mm -hmm. But if we put some event listener here, get this box element. Click. This is gonna put the tag and remove it every time I click on that. So this is what the toggle class, how the toggle class works. What about has class? How can I do that? Contains. So class list dot contains. And any idea what is this gonna return to me? True or false. True or false. So this is gonna return or not. Oh. Yeah, I just need to print that up, this out. So if I have the class this is what it's going to return. This is true. If I come here, remove that, and run that code again, it's false. Got it? OK, last one. This is how you declare CSS with jQuery. So you, you have this object and you start gathering that. I like this a lot. With JavaScript, 
how can we do that? Set the background and set the height. Style, right? Let's try that. Mm -hmm. So first, let's put this one and height three hundred. So the way you can do this, I'm not sure if this is going to work. Let's check it out. No idea if this is going to work. Yeah, that doesn't work. I guess you need to put it one by one. So this is an overview of the equivalence of jQuery to, to JavaScript, plain JavaScript. Uh, knowing how to play with the DOM, knowing the APIs that are available, it's important because we are working with the browser, so, um, and you need to communicate with the browser. So remember that audio that we created? Um,